Hello everybody, Mr. Moo here in the cockpit, here in Elite Dangerous, here and wondering why nobody was showing up. Oh, the stream actually uh, didn't go live. Well, fixing that one right now, so we're starting... Well, we're starting at the same time chronologically, but uh, for any viewers later, you don't get the five-minute countdown. Or the news stories, but it was mostly just rehashing what's what else has been going on here in the news. Ah... <sighs> Terlock, hey, what's up? My bad, screwing up there on the news. So yeah, nothing, nothing major in the news here. Let's see here. Let's let's double check that real quick. Um, yeah, starport status update, week in review, inside the Far God cult. Yeah, nothing, nothing new from yesterday. Shoutouts, shoutouts to Henning Stone, Flame Note Red, KW uh, Quicksilver. There we go, Quicksilver, and Dasruski. Interesting combination there. Thank you all. Welcome to the crew. Welcome to the show. Hope you're enjoying your stay. It says I'm still hosting, but I'm live. Streamlabs going on again. Sure sounds like it, doesn't it? It says I'm still hosting. Yeah, uh, let me see if I can unhost. All right. So, yeah, I used unhost. I shouldn't be hosting anything. Zolidair, hello there. How you doing? So yeah, I got some uh, new... Modified the layout a little bit to show my current system, how many miles I got on the clock. And distance to where I want to go. We aren't getting there today. Sansen, 07. Halsey Fox, 07. Right. Uh, I think Ghost Tracker has about an hour head start on me. Estimated profit, 07. We got some, uh, we got some work to do. So, heat's in the tools. Let's get to it. So an interesting route I'm taking today in Varad 07. How you doing? Yeah, an interesting route we're taking today because... Let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Right down the center of the galaxy, this this prime meridian here, this galactic meridian, Key systems are at there is a thousand light years on either side where there are almost zero neutron stars. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to go, well, we're going to go west. We're going to go west off that galactic meridian, and we're going to end up in the neutron jet stream. And then we are going to switch north and start cannonballing. Easy solution is to go an hour longer than when she stops. Well, yes. Uh, Bibliophilus, yes, I made it to Sag A. Um, made it in about three, three and a half hours or so. It was 196 jumps from Earth to Sag A using uh, my ship and my my route planning. Sniper man, hello there. So yeah, 196 jumps. That is not Stay bad at all. I was checking, I did approximately 130, I think it was 136 light years per jump. Yeah, we're gonna be racing safe. We're just gonna be, you know, I mean, like here where I'm just gonna thread the needle between two stars system map system map really Alex system map what is going on well listening would help system map system map uh, on Xbox, we'd have to, to uh, find... Yeah, you'd have to manually find and jump from Neutron to Neutron, yeah. Minor mutiny. Turns out voice attack didn't actually have its, uh, have its ears on. A little click of the button and we are good to go. Jumping to next system. Mm. 
And congratulations to the Air Tree Alliance. We have expanded no into the Undine world. system. A lot of good stuff there, if I remember right. Uh, Sanson, yes, you can use Spanch on a side laptop. However, you'd have to manually enter every uh, every system name using an Xbox controller. So, not... yeah, yeah, not optimal. Hull integrity is within limits. All other systems are at normal levels. Let's see here, is that actually updating? Okay, why are you still saying I'm at SAG A? That's better. More expansion, no more accidental wars. Yeah. Confirming exit point. Yeah, I'm getting tired of accidentally wars. There we go. Now we're getting the odometer updated. So yeah, pulling up the galaxy map. This is where I'm at, and this is where I want to be. So I'm here. Just getting away from SAG A right now. We're going to continue through the far 3 kiloparsec arm, up the Perseus stem, through the Boreas region, past Styx, and into kind of the, uh, what are we called, the Galactic Apahelion, on the near edge of the Scutum Centaurus arm. That's the plan. Whether or not we get there today is a totally different matter. Okay, we updating? We're updating. Bibliophilus, stuck on a rocky and steep mountainside in a lodgepole pine jungle in the dark. Actually, that does kind of sound like fun. I know I'm a little crazy, but that sounds like fun. Adjusting for jump. Three nine two five nine. Okay, is the distance closing or opening? Key systems are at optimal levels. Ready for exit now. Nope, it's closing. All right. So yeah, how is everybody? I realize that we're kind of kind of cannonballing as fast as we can, not doing much in the way of exploration right now. More, you know, very amateur wacky races. Trying to cut a road back to the road. Hmm. I'd lend you my bulldozer. Except, one, it's in the shop, and two, I don't actually have one. Which I probably should have mentioned first, but, you know. System map. System cartography. Well, you look like a water world. Nope. Resume course. Locking next star system.
Jumping to next system. But yeah, we're going to be cannonballing out to Beagle Point and then kind of taking Friendship a little bit faster. Well, not no faster, but detected. the opposite. Slower. Slower trip back. I'm not taking the fast way home, not with this data. Checking systems now. Complete. We're going to take a little bit more meandering path on the way back, kind of explore our way back, because, well, I've never been out on this side of the galaxy too terribly much. Ghost, hello there. Where are you at? Uh, Bibliophilus, no, not gonna take the ring road around. We're just gonna go. We're just gonna go straight through. I'm taking a. I'm taking a side. Well, the jump range on this is big enough that it can actually cross the abyss without too much trouble. Systemibe. All right. Let's see where you are relative to me. Scanning for anomalies. None detected. The Bifrost has, eno has enough oomph in its engines that we can probably just punch straight through. Galaxy map. Display map. Paste. How in the... Well, Ghost Tracker's got roughly a uh, 3,000, 3,600, yeah, 3,600 light year advantage. Time to drop the hammer. Very nice neutron star change. Uh, Bibliophilus, how much premium jumponium I got? Zero. Space. But you needed a few now. premium jumps okay. at 34 light years. No, wait, I don't even know if you needed premium jumps at 34 light years. I think you five, just needed four, basic jumps. Astacon, hello there. Yeah, be careful where you drop the hammer. Will do, Varad. How goes the Beagles? Ghost Tracker's got a 3600 light year head start on me. And we are taking vastly divergent courses. She went east, I went west. Both of us trying to get out of the, uh, out of that dead zone of neutron stars along the uh, galactic meridian. If you've ever seen, if you've seen a neutron star map of the galaxy, it is stupid ridiculous. The very suspiciously empty path of neutrons. Alright, FSD's good. Let's ride. Commander Light and Magic signing in for lurking. Welcome aboard and uh no, lurk away. Key systems are at optimal levels. Readying for exit now. Uh Mike actually doesn't sound so bad according to people I'm testing with. Yeah, just give me a few here so I don't go flying into a neutron star. I'm familiar with your dastardly plans. Critical draft, hello there. How you doing? Boost activated. Okay. Let's see. One. I wanted to show this because this is just a little too suspicious if you ask me.
All right, here is a map of the neutron stars in the galaxy. All these white dots, neutron stars. That's more than a little suspicious, wouldn't you say? Just a wee bit. That's centered on Earth and the bubble. Thousand light years this way, thousand light years this way, nothing. All the way out. Yeah. I ain't buying it. Did I learn beam weapons overheat real quick on a Cobra? All right, good to know. Looks like an artifact from the Stellar Forge. Yeah, that or somebody blew up an angel in Tokyo 3. Okay. Let's load up the Discord. Discord check. Alright, well, we're gonna try a call with Ghost Tracker, see how it goes, and uh, yeah, here, let's, let's get this set up. Uh, Ghost, I am starting call now, which is going to be 20 seconds in the future. Yeah, you know how delays work. <laughs> hello, hello? Hello? Alright, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I don't think the stream can. Hello? Okay, there we go. Ooh! Frameshift now engaged. Yeah, this might been... play. Hmm? <laughs> Sorry, that just listening back on my mic play. Optimum levels ready for exit. Warning. Yes, a pixie. A a, a tank playing uh, a tank playing starship flying pixie. No, the voice isn't creepy. Microphone needs a little work, but the voice is fine. <laughs> AI voice pack. Yes, it's my ghost tracker pack. <laughs> Very good at blowing up target ships, let me tell you. Also good at blowing up factions if she gives too much uh, nav data out too fast. Leaving system. I am the navigation queen. <laughs> And I nearly choke on my drink. <laughs> Temperatures are at an acceptable. Yeah, this is what happens when you use a really bulk setup, but apparently it sounds okay. <laughs> it's a little tinny. I will. I will admit it's a little tinny, but uh, no, I think it's it's workable. And it only yeah. gets better tomorrow when you get, you know, you said you were getting some new equipment in. Yep, I'm getting a reverse splitter for my headset so I can plug it into sound card so I can, uh, what's the term, like, divert the use of my, no, bypass the use of my jack, which I broke. Course adjustment. Once Ask it. Oops. One. Mm. Uh, sorry, I'm just reading Askinson. Askinson? Ah, uh, Light and Magic says this does not sound well. Shoot. Um, let me let me see if I can bring the volume down a little bit. Before I fly into the star right, navigate back to the game screen. Uh, let's see, it sounded really heavily modulated, sound? or you were clipping If it sounds too bad, uh, I can always stop it. It's fine, just sounds like the gain is turned up to 15. Let me bring the gain down a little bit. That might be my laptop mic as well. It's super, super sensitive, and I, I don't know how to fiddle with that. Alright. <sighs> uh, yeah, I, I just potted the input down a little bit. Uh, say something now, see how it, see how it pops out. Uh, test. All right, that's 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 coming in better. That's that's actually right. balancing out fairly well, I think. I got all those games. 
<laughs> Maximum velocity. And now I have a, a malicious navigation pixie Next in my computer. Destination confirmed. Arrival in five, four, three, two, one. And why is that not showing? Right, because that. Laptop mic, all the explanation needed. <laughs> yeah, this is what happens when you use a really bold kind of like Jerry Rig setup. <laughs> There's a lot of planets in those, okay? System map. Activated. System map. Display map. Hello. System cartography. Hello, Dazzy. How you doing? Let's see here. Okay, well, it's a bunch of rocks, ice, rocky ice, icy rocks, and. Low-powered hydrogen. <laughs> Pissed off, but nothing new. Isn't that the way of life? <laughs> Certainly the way of pissed off. Yeah. Adjusting for jump. The amount of times I like fly in and out of neutral stars. Interstellar travel mode is now. All systems check out. No one I sound like activity. A, oh, I just had more like mic flow back to me. I, just, I sound like a child. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you're sounding roughly nine-ish. <laughs> Boost activated. After watching you guys, I can't wait to try the neutron boost. It's good when it works, it's less so when it don't. I almost flew in the reverse, like, reverse of the stream. Uh, that was dangerous. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> it's like, um, you know how, like, the, you got the jet cones, and if you fly into them the wrong way, it'll take you out of their first game. Yeah. It almost happened. Friendship? <laughs> No anomalies. Because I tried to swing back around and I screwed it up. Oh. I, uh, <laughs> I was, I was screaming a lot of profanities in Swedish. Uh, estimated profit. What happens if it doesn't work well? You get trapped in the jet cone and your ship gets torn apart. And unless you are very, very good and very, very lucky, uh, you aren't getting that ship back. I did it once with the python, but I ended up blowing up halfway to the station. Wait, how do you end up blowing up halfway to the station? Because I accidentally crashed into I saw, and it was like it wasn't just enough to push push my hull in. Ah, gotcha. Uh, Desert dude, sorry about that. Missed that. A uh, long time. Hope all are well. Doing all right. Doing all right. I am currently racing Ghost Tracker here. The uh, the. Uh, Hi. Yeah, the malicious space pixie in my headset. Let's see here. Actually, let's let's see here. I'm gonna actually do, do, do. let's lights on. Hey, best buddy. No, oh, I didn't say you. lights. Desert dude, thank you so much for the prime sub. Greatly appreciated. Uh, as you can see, I've got an odometer up. How many light years I've flown? How many light years we got left to go? And I am going to do. do, do. Oh, I know. I'll do this. I'm going to turn off the audio on voice attack. That way. Doink. There, perfect. There, you're in the Discord. Welcome to the Discord, Critical Drift. Yeah, I think they make a cream for that desert, dude. <laughs> it's called a plasma. Uh, that will certainly remove the itching, along with everything else. <laughs> I love the system <laughs> things around here. Has I'll resident say. Imperial Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> Evil, I like it. Uh, do you have your voice attack audio routing to a solo channel on a mixer? 
Uh, no, I don't, Uber. My, my mixer setup is a little... My entire computer runs into the mixer on basically one channel. So I am going back into the computer audio and manually using the software mixer to turn that off. My mixer is basically two channel. Computer, me. <laughs> and by the way, 07, yes. Reminds me, I have to take some selfies. Mm. Yep. Gotta get that asp into the picture. <laughs> Every other explorer does. I was looking at um, EDSM's specs on Beagle Point. There have been a lot of condas passing through the area. The age of the explorer conda became a, a major deal. <laughs> I've always preferred my explorer, my ass explorer. I know there's something cozy about it. <laughs> no, no, I, I get that, and I mean, I, uh, the ass explorer is like a nice, you know, like a, like a Range Rover or Land Rover or something, you know, something a little bit more designed for off-road use. This thing is like <laughs> the off-road bus. <laughs> the Anaconda, I, I've seen. I've seen these great big Overland Explorer rigs where it is just a massive off-road bus with a built-in garage underneath so you can deploy a sports car. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind one of those, but then again, there's a lot of a lot of things I wouldn't mind. It's basically an expedition with a great big diesel engine. Oh, then my mic broke there. Hmm? I can hear you. That's that sound like my mic broke. Yeah. I have a dream to make one and go on expeditions. It really <laughs> does sound like fun. I mean, there's there's a certain value of, of roughing it. But no, an ASP is very flexible. It can actually maneuver in super cruise. You know, as opposed to this ship, which just has a very tight orbit. <laughs> and the orbit's slightly smaller than the moon's the gas. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's a lot going for an Asp Explorer. Now, the problems with the Asp Explorer are this, to me. One, it can't carry the kitchen sink with it. Um, two... The retro rockets are more like bottle rockets. Bottle rockets. <laughs> yeah. Resume course. Oh, I'm here. All right. Galaxy map. Uh, I'm 13 jumps on my next wave. <sighs> it was saying I still had five jumps to go, and no, it was it was lying to me. It's me, your system sabotaging. The navigation <laughs> pixie. <laughs> Damn you, Navigation Pixie! <laughs> okay. Let's start navigating. You know, that's a major problem. Okay. The system I was trying to navigate to via the Spanch, um, the Spanch Neutron Router is actually not existing on the map. Well, fun. Yeah, that's a bit of a... <laughs> what country was this car made in? It no longer exists. <laughs> and I am in Stewie Mao. WR dash J. Okay. All right, and calculate I'm... route. Um, Bowie K. 
<laughs> right, can you spell that phonetically? <laughs> Actually. Um, Galaxy map. No, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm being smartass. Um, oh. <laughs> let's see here. I need to go up. I really need to go up. <laughs> We're at what, 25? Small ass is the best kind of ass. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I need to go up. I'm at negative 22. We are going up. We're going up into the neutron layer. <clears throat> Ways to break your mic 101, just cough into it. Oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. Pop filters are your friend. Thirteen hundred light years almost straight up. Now let's modify that course a little bit more. Okay, here we go. Um, let's see here. Critical drift. When you're exploring, do you come across random NPCs and colonies, or is everything in the bubble? Uh, most everything's in the bubbles. Uh, because there's also the Colonia bubble about 20,000 light years away. So what I'm doing now is I'm going Z positive. I'm going up versus the galactic axis. Because there is a large layer of neutron stars between 1100 and 2100 light years up. Is that like all over the galaxy? Or is that just in a specific point, like around the core? Um, around the core... Well, actually, they are... Uh, trying to remember my galactic mapping here. Basically, one arm in from where we are. At the, uh... Yeah. Like, around the conflux. Six A fuel scope really beats a free A. Well, I don't know why I had a free A fuel scope on everything. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to save non-existent weight. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I've mentioned, my. I've... Oh, sorry. Go on. Uh, so I think I um I had the idea that like better things can go in there. So long as I had a fuel scope, it was fine. But. 10 minutes to re refuel on the mess. <laughs> yeah. Whee! <laughs> yeah, like I've like I've mentioned, my poor my poor beleaguered friend Commander Jera Heavens Run, who got the game at my insistence because <laughs> they teach astronomy. And they're like, exploration in this game sucks. It takes forever and a day to refuel anything. He had a two-way fuel scoop on a Cobra 3. <laughs> oh. I said, did you get a different size scoop? Oh, they come in different sizes? <laughs> yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Astacon, two-way fuel scoop. Forget a stopwatch, he could have timed his fuel stops with a calendar. Uh, may I post a link? I've been writing a newbie guide. Sure thing, one moment, let me uh, post permission. There you go. Wait a minute, newbie guide to what?
I'm very familiar with timing things with a calendar. Christmas, birthdays, my time running the mile in high school. <laughs> well, my, my, I mean, personally, my class in high school was 40 strong. 40 people. And, yeah. I mean, our entire high school was, I believe, 120 people. And so, when... You were one of three? <laughs> hmm? Sorry. You were like one of three classes? Uh, four. Oh. I mean, yeah, it was four classes. And, yeah, it was... Uh, basically, I mean, everybody's like... <laughs> the, the tryouts for any athletic team was a scale and a yardstick. You must be <laughs> this tall or you must be this heavy. Congratulations, you're on the team. And they wanted me on the track team because they needed what they... They said they needed an anchor for one of the relay races. Well, I am a very good anchor. I drag everybody down. You hold things in place. Yeah, I, I am <laughs> very good at holding things in place. Suddenly blinded by a booty class. Ooh. Ah. An Astrocon, thank you. And might be useful to share with new folks. All right, I will. Yeah, let me let me get a look at that and save it up. And I'm, I may just pin this. We shall see. I mean, not right now because I'm trying to. Not let that, that lead that Ghost has become insurmountable, or uninsurmountable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uninsurmountable. That's the word I'm looking for, and slightly fearing. At least you don't have, like, an 8,000 lead. <laughs> I never had an 8,000 light year lead. 5,000 at most yesterday. I think the same car started twice. <laughs> Every time you took a break, something happened on my end that forced me to take a break. Okay, flying into the same star twice is amusing. Not that I haven't done that. <laughs> I did it with a neutron star. I flew into the same neutron star twice and didn't die. That's the important That's part. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> I managed to somehow avoid the jet cone. Epic fail. And yet epic win. Yeah, it just... All kinds of confuzzlement abounds. 92% uh, on the FSD. Ah, keep going. Oh, my. Oh, my. Seven. Ooh. You only run into you, you only start glitching out around eighty. Also, is that eighty five? Uh, no, I've 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 run down to eighty percent, and that's when I really start running into glitches. Oh. I mean, there's. Sanson, Sanson's heard this story. Probably a few of you heard this story, but uh, my boss at the uh, radio station I used to work at uh, estimated profit. FSD degrades from things like this, where I am flying through the jet cone of a neutron star and using my fuel scoop to suck in some hyper-energized particles to use as fuel. Otherwise, no, the FSD doesn't really degrade. This degrades it. This is working beyond manufacturer warranty. Just a little I'm, bit. Yeah, just a little bit. I'm quadrupling my jump range. <laughs> but yeah, my, my boss back at the uh, radio station I used to work at, he used to be in the Navy. And after one wild night in Cuba, him and his buddy stagger back on board the ship. They're kind of leaning on each other. <laughs> they, they salute the guard, they get on board, they're 30 or 60 miles out, of, out to sea. One of them, his buddy looks around and says, Hey, aren't we supposed to be stationed on a carrier? <laughs> yeah, they'd uh, uh -oh. popped on board a uh, guided missile cruiser that was part of the carrier escort group. And I am... Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Okay. So they had to... Oh, sorry, go on. Uh, 
I think you're a little garbled there. Sorry. <laughs> you just oh, sounded... No. There, there it came back. No, no, there, there's garbling. It sounds like you've, it sounds like you've been hyperdicted again. Oh boy. Um. See, I heard that part though, where you just said, "Oh boy." Hmm. Might be my connection. Well, now you're, now you're coming through clear again. Oh, okay. Oh. Hmm. My, my dad's probably like working on something downstairs. Uber, sorry, I was using my EMP a way of warming up some food. I need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so, so no, to get to get back on the carrier, uh, this was part of their punishment, basically. Um, they didn't get choppered over. They had to ride the chair. Now, if anybody's unfamiliar with this, what happens is two ships come up alongside each other, and with a carrier involved, that still means that there's a good, say... 100 feet of, you know, 100 feet of clearance between the two, between the two vessels. And they will fire, one ship will fire a line over to the other using like, you know, just fire a weighted cable over and they will hook it up to a pulley and then hook up a, hook up a chair hanging from this cable <laughs> and winch you over. So now you've got two guys who are very, very hungover in somewhat, somewhat, uh, well, they, they said moderate seas. I think he said sea state three. And um, that's that's no good for your, your state of hungover. <laughs> Especially because these guys have been chugging tomato juice in order to try to fight off the hangover. Oh, so, <laughs> when, they, when they started the trip in their dress whites, and they finished the trip in their dress reds. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a bad, all kinds of bad deal. <laughs> I want to make them swing. They didn't. You didn't need to make them swing. <laughs> they were doing that all just fine on their own because of the two <laughs> ships. Because yeah, I mean you've got you've got a carrier which is a very very, very large piece of equipment and a guided missile cruiser which is merely a large piece of equipment. <laughs> Ooh, preparing to jump to a... Oh, crap. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. Actually. Hold that thought. Galaxy map. Oh, what are my current coordinates? I've got a neutron boost here. Eos Cherry RPG. I'm on, I should be on my route of discovered neutron stars now. Oh, that's good. Um, crap, 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 crap. <laughs> right, okay, recalculating jump coordinates. Yeah, also a carrier is very tall. You are correct, Bibliophilus. Uh, Anaconda is about the size of a large cruiser. It's it's not it's nowhere ne well small carrier. I mean maybe a small carrier from like World War II, but a modern say like a Nimitz, there's still no comparison really. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, maybe an escort carrier. What's that? Maybe like the Anaconda is the same size as an escort carrier. Possibly. Easy enough to. Uh, get the information here in a moment. Um, let's see here. Desert Dude, did you ever get the Warthog fixed? Uh, yes, I did. Though I I decided to not go with the Warthog throttle. Okay. Alright. We are good to go. Should we decide, like, a certain star that we should have to get to, or just the general area? I'd say just the general area. Okay. Yeah, I really do like the slide throttle better than the uh, than the over the top arc. Also, this has more this has more usable 
or useful controls for Elite than the Warthog Throttle. Warthog is great for real-life simulation, but not quite what I need for... Not quite what I need for this kind of sim. I am going uh, way I too fast. I can't plot to a 20k light year, and apparently the max is 1999. Well, I'm sure you will make up that extra light year somewhere. <laughs> Oh, uh, that was me talking, and I just totally missed the, uh, the jet. That's better. Yeah, the toggle switches on the Warthog leave a wee bit to be desired in Elite. But no, I love the stick. I just stuck a um, stuck an extension on the Warthog stick. Uh, Mongoose T50. Yes, I actually put money into the bank account of a man from Belarus to give me some retrofitted <laughs> retrofitted hardware. My game's lagging, trying to like root the plot the root. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying I got a chance? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> oh boy, that was that was some terrible garble. Yeah, if the game's lagging, and it's probably lagging everything else, too, it sounds like a connection issue. Galaxy map. The stream's working fine. Paste. And I'm still, I'm still gobbling. A uh, little, well, uh, you're sounding better now. Uh, how long does the FSD stay supercharged? Uh, it can stay supercharged until you make your next jump. Or as long as you stay in Super Cruise. Turn down the resolution. Do we have. Oh, we have transcoding today. Woohoo! I've got transcoding! <laughs> Uh, you can even log out, I think, and keep the charge. That'd be an interesting thing to test, just not in the middle of a race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, estimated profit. What is transcoding? Why is it exciting? If you have a bad connection, you can dial down the uh, resolution on the stream so it stays smooth and you can hear things. At the cost of some visual sharpness. I think your stream quality is like the definition of legally blind for me right now. <laughs> ah. Okay, are we talking like legally blind or like professional umpire blind? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm still plotting. Alright. I'm at well, fifty percent plot. And oh seven, Budman, how you doing? Fifty five percent. This is how long this takes. Galaxy map. Oh, you might speak up a wee bit of background noise. 
Alright. Paste. Also, for anybody interested in exploring these regions, if you see here, I mean, you can see against the uh, backdrop of the galaxy, which, you know, is here, the galactic core regions, all these little spots, these are black holes. All these little black dots. Totally unexplored, totally ready for somebody to come out and put their name on them. In fact, most of the stars in this region are totally unexplored because, honestly, this is not exactly the direct route to Beagle Point. I'm going up and over in order to get into a, basically, a neutron star jet stream. System map. Yeah, this is actually a totally unexplored neutron. Oh, that's no good, bud man. Uh, Bibliophilus, does one need extra fuel tanks for crossing the abyss? You can usually find scoopable stars in the abyss. It's not a case of extra fuel tanks, just a case of either having really good jump range to bypass the trouble spots, or... Yeah, really good jump range, or really, really good astro-navigational skill. Resume course. And I'm back, hopefully. Welcome back. <laughs> Yeah, plenty of wolf raids out here, too. I think. I've never seen a wolf riot. They're kind of like O or B class stars, except bigger and somewhat meaner. Oh. Huh. They're, well, they're like O or B class stars that are on the tail end of their uh, life cycle. Oh, so like about to become neutral black holes. Yeah, with that whole intervening explosion segment. The fun bit. <laughs> yeah, the fun <laughs> bit. The one you don't want to be around for. Uh, Desert Dude, I really dig the odometer thing. I don't think I've seen that before. What does that plug into? So, that is a program I'm using called Captain's Log 2. And what I basically did was, I did a capture window, and then I cropped that down. And I did that twice for two separate... This is what Captain's Log actually looks like. Let me pull this up. This is what it actually looks like. Now there's an overlay you can get where you can see the odometer on your screen. But that, that requires, for streaming, that would require me actually just broadcasting the entire window. So instead what I've done is... I've done a game capture and then two separate window captures on top of that. So this is what you get to see. <clears throat> Pro coding. <laughs> uh, Sanson, those wolf rates can get up to... Is that half a million K? That is half a million Kelvin. That is... That's warm. <laughs> High level pro streaming, yeah, right. I still feel like I'm banging rocks together here sometimes. At least your mic works. <laughs> oh, the microphone, yeah, I, I put a lot into this sound setup. It's a dry heat. <laughs> <laughs> Resume course. 499,726.85 Celsius. Whew. Yeah, it's, it's... So, what you're saying is like Phoenix in July. Yeah. <laughs> the city? No, the actual bird when it's on fire. <laughs> the, 
the bird? No, the gene. Galaxy map. Galaxy map. Actually, let's find out what we can... Let's see if there's any wolf rates in the area. This is about the fifth time I've, like, passed through the stream of a neutron star. This... Ah! <laughs> Oh, oh, class. Fine. Yeah, Budman, I mean Gene, Gene Gray, that Phoenix. My wife is either evil, all powerful, or dead. Don't worry, dear, we just make sure she stays in the dead category this time. Oh, my face just pissed those off. What's that? Did I call them? No, no, I, I was just so wait, yeah. your your jump your jump booster's been turned off this whole time or just recently? Um, I don't know. <clears throat> well then. Garble. There's the gobble. Garble, garble. Uh, Uber, story time. When I was traveling out to Colonia my first time, when I first came across an unknown section of space, I was scanning everything. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with this. <laughs> so my scoop was topped off every jump. Now when I was done with the tourist stuff, I was making great time and range. When my fuel gets slowish, I just use one cone-boosted jump to land me in a system with an M-Class primary. Yep, just super boost on the way to a scoopable star and then continue on. <laughs> when your buddy doesn't mention the five pound <laughs> bottle of... Yeah, pretty much. You're going to have to something something garble minute. Oh. One Can more I time. Um, I'm going to have to replay again. So you're going to have like five minutes. <laughs> okay. Right. Paste. I think my dad's uploading pictures downstairs, so it's like killing the internet off. <laughs> Ah, okay, 944 light years, and I'm going to pull that off in four jumps. <clears throat> Didn't someone visit the Raxla system, honk, and jump again? Oh, please. That old spacer's tale. The smile of a child. <laughs> yeah, Raxla can be found in the laughter of a child, and in the twinkle of the eye of... Yeah, it's... It's found in the BS of very large ungulant. Ungulant, that's the word. Imagine finding out if you were the person to do that, though. You jump in system to Raxalan and jump out again without well, looking. Well, I imagine the scream would echo the planet three times, so you'd eventually be able to <laughs> zero in on it. Yeah, on the same level of rumor, I can sell you this awesome bridge in Brooklyn. Scotland have their own version of that. I can sell you the, uh, the fourth rail bridge. 
Well, I do know that the actual London Bridge is in, what, Arizona now or something? I don't know. I think so. One of them. Wasn't it transferred, like, piece by piece? Yeah. Like a more crappy version of Xanatos' castle from Gargoyles. <laughs> so we're going to put a castle on a skyscraper? That's awesome! What if we just move this bridge to Arizona? <laughs> I guess... The veil between the PC world and the ghost world is causing interference. <laughs> there is a print at my feet. That's making things look. <laughs> Well, there goes my goggle again. Yeah, you can actually get gravitational lensing off of neutron stars if you're far enough away that you notice it. Um, once upon a time, I... Sp oh, what system was it? I have no idea what system it was. But it had a dual... It had binary neutron stars fast orbiting each other, and the gravitational lensing looked like a peanut from about 10,000 light seconds out. Oh, yeah, also the two were right next to each other, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the, the neutron stars yeah. were right next to each other. Hello. Master 10, hello there. What's the good word? What's up? Actually, I think that was on the trip where Hank blew me up, the little fuzzy jerk. <laughs> I'm just impressed. I'm, I'm impressed he managed to get you up to 12,000 light years before you blew up your heat. Oh, yeah, 12,000 or 1,200% heat, yeah. Little jerk. <laughs> so for those just tuning in, we are flying with Ghost Tracker today in a, uh, in a race. Race to Beagle Point, because neither of us have been there. I should really, really see about uh, getting my FSD fixed. It's starting to run down into glitch territory. Uh, Desert Dude, jump range on the Conda is 75.03 light years on a full tank. Something like just south of 80 on a half tank. Uh, full comparison, my asterisk was 62 light years. When you remember to activate the boost. It's better. Who's Smokey and who's the bandit? Um, well, let's see here. I think Ghost is actually Smokey, given how much she set her ship on fire on this trip. twice. <laughs> Resume course? Oh, I'm here. Okay. I'm so, oh. Nope. Oh, sorry. Go on. I might have to bat my dad off the internet. Uh, Desert Dude. Yeah, it's with the Guardian FSD booster. Uh, anyone know where scouts are popping up currently? Got a got a ship to test out. Not sure, Terlock. Um, check. Um, I know that. Oh, okay. Uh, one second. Just need to find where I put it. Yes, this is where I can't find it. Go. Because they had it in um, the cannon chat. 
Yeah, if you check Canon's uh, Lab 69 Xeno Intelligence Agency, they ought to have the latest uh, Eagle Eye reports. Ah, here we go. Um, HR784. HR784. A August test. A R G E S T E S. Oh, I I'm scooping up here. Give me a second. Do -do. Uh -oh. Alright, looks like Terlock got it. So an interesting right? thing, an interesting thing about using the Spanch Jump Booster... Ah, thank you, Ghost. Better. <clears throat> the great latest Twitch app has a memory leak. This is why I always use stable things like Windows browsers. <laughs> but you know, going back to what I was saying here, this is very interesting because the Spanch jump plotter is saying there's like five jumps in between neutron stars and seven jumps in between stars. Um, I am actually finding like closer to, let's see here, 582. Yeah, I'm, this, this is actually plotting. This doesn't, the Spanch router doesn't know all the neutron stars in the region. The in-game plotter does. So if I get into a region up here, like the Neutron Jet Stream, all of my estimates here on Spanch are actually... I, I, they're seriously overestimating the number of jumps I gotta take. Which is... I wonder how much she's caught up to me. Oh. Hmm? I wonder how much she's caught up to me. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Give me a second. I can let you know exactly what system I'm in. Oh, and I apologize for like, I know it's every time you talk, I tend to talk and it creates a clash. <laughs> Sorry. No, uh, no, all good. Let's see here. Yeah, Spanch only knows what's been reported, so I'm actually filling in a lot of the gaps here on the map. Uh, Ghost, here in chat. That is the system I'm going to be jumping to right now. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go Oh, right, you can't, you can't copy-paste easily. Shoot. Yeah. Way to insult. <laughs> it, it, would be, it, it would be easier if you just gave me your system. Only if you scan the star. Well, then I guess the mysteries of the neutron stars shall remain mysteries, won't they? <laughs> I promise I'll do my I'll do my due diligence on the way back and scan these things. Right now I got a ghost to catch up with. You can't catch the spooky one. Uh-huh. Well, let's let's see here. Let me get charged up, and then I will take a look on the map. I've gone nearly ten thousand. No, no, never mind. Seven thousand light years already. Galaxy map. Okay, you are 7,000 light years away from me. However, I am much, much closer to Beagle. I am, well, let's, let's check here. Here's a better way, here's a better estimate. I am 34,400 light years from Beagle. Um, hold on, I can get one side of jumps in. All right. Yeah, I'm 34-4. 34-4. Four, four. 
Actually, you can see it in my chat. Quick, I'll distract her with mapping. <laughs> Take advantage of my Xbox takes seven years. Oh, I'm 35,000 light years. Ah, so I am a thousand light years ahead of you. Resume course. Oh, that gobble. Gobble, stop. Galaxy map. Paste. Uh, no, uh, she's... I'm taking... Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm taking my... I've been around this area before, and I've discovered all these neutron stars already, like, in a line, so I decided to head for them. And, like, blitz through. But it's not working. <laughs> because the platter takes seven years to plot. And meanwhile, Budman, I am taking a slightly modified route where I went I went sideways for about a thousand light years and then went up for a thousand light years and put myself straight into a neutron star jet stream. And so I'm just getting boosted jump after boosted jump after boosted jump. So we're neither of us has taken the direct route. System map. And everybody remind me before I jump, actually fix the damn ship. Oh yeah. Every time you said that, I'm like, I need to do that, and then I forget. <laughs> okay, we're clear of the star. Scoop is winding down. Thank you, Budman. Fix the ship. Terlock, thank you. Fix the damn ship. <laughs> damn ship fixing commencing. I wonder how many air flights have passed up. Best Just not to dwell. Down. <laughs> Best not to dwell. Money. Well, you can get it on the way back. Yeah, sure. Uh, Astacon, may I pilfer opinion from chat for a moment? You can't pilfer it if it's offered willingly. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Never mind me, I'm just strange. <laughs> That little strange here. Normal is a strange. <laughs> yes, our, our panel of experts is standing by, Astacon. <laughs> <laughs> My opinion costs cash. Wait, you can charge for those part. things? <laughs> You're part Holy. of the in this group. You can't charge. <laughs> I can. Why haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, salute, thinking face, zomg. I'm going to hit this with a crowbar. 
What should my last emote be? Ooh, boy. Is there some kind of, uh, instead, well, that might be covered by Zom, good, but some kind of what has been seen cannot be unseen. Light eyes. <laughs> yeah, confusion's a good one. You know the I can see through time. <laughs> Usually after um, after your evening diet has consisted of Nyquil because you're just that sick. Yeah, Zom could cover both fairly well. Mm. Uh, I like Terlock's idea, confusion. Better to wear that emote. Gordon Freeman or the Tenth Doctor? I would say Freeman. Yeah, Freeman. <laughs> I mean, I'm a fan of Ten, but no, Freeman is Freeman is the, the Freeman is timeless. Is my favorite doctor, but you can't, you can't, you can't beat the legend. I'm trying to think, my first doctor was well during the. You see, the the public television station in Iowa was like one of the only places that actually still had the old Doctor Who serials, and I think the first one I ever saw was uh, Tom Baker. Tom Baker is my. Like my family favorite, uh, like the family, my family will like him the most. I I love David Tennant though. Yeah, Tennant was fun. Uh, I I don't know the the latter stuff kind of started get a little uh, I don't know but. <laughs> Go. Resume course. Holy crap, I'm already here. It told me I was gonna... This is a lot more... This is more jumping than... No, this is less jumping than I expected. Huh. Tenant is great in Jessica Jones, that's true. He is creepy as hell. I, th I think in order of, like, the recent ones, it would be ten. Smith, uh... Oh, who's the ninth one? Oh, Eccleston. Eccleston, that's Christopher Eccleston. Yep. Uh, and Tom Baker. And then I like the second one. <laughs> uh, Delta, what's a good PvE chieftain build? <laughs> uh, Delta, there you will see the Taurus on that list of on that uh, on that list of ships. Take a look at the build for the EAS Taurus. I am biased because I built the damn thing, raised it from a pup, but it is a very, very good ship. Me and Lover both have shit space off of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ugh, oh, one moment, got a cough. Which still came through the Discord, but didn't come through the uh, didn't come through the stream. I'm now half deaf, guys. <laughs> Find it weird that a doctor married the real life real life daughter of a doctor that played the on-screen daughter of the said doctor. 
Wait. Yo, dog. <laughs> I heard you like doctors. <laughs> I'm sorry, you ran your uh, audio through the Martian translator there. Yay! Damn, Moonspeak! <laughs> Episode was a weird one. I, I liked it, but it was confusing. Yes, yes, it was. Uh, Uber, may I link in chat? Sure, let's, uh. There you go. Yeah, spies like us flashback, doctor, 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 doctor. Oh, it's now time to repair my ship because it's not functioning. Ah! You know, actually, the, the the way your audio sounds right now, <laughs> it reminds me of um, one of the Rogue Squadron novels. And it was... Hmm? What's that? You garbled again. Oh, no. Basically, uh, what... Garble. They, okay, so... Oh, wait, no, it was Wraith Squadron. You see... When they were trying to recruit people for the squadron, um, Jansen liked pulling pranks on Wedge. And one of the things he did was um, faked a <clears throat> faked an application to the squadron from an Ewok. <laughs> Lieutenant Catch. Yeah, you should hear him say yub yub. Turns it into a war cry. Well, in an amazing callback two or three novels later, Wedge is flying a TIE Interceptor wearing an all-black flight suit so he blends in, with an Ewok puppet strapped to his chest with metal extensions running down um, from the Ewok's arms to wedge his hands on the controls. <laughs> and then Jansen programmed the Ty's computer to filter Wedge's voice through an Ewok. And then proceeded to give him no amount no, no small amount of, of static over this. Uh, you do realize that flying a military fighter while performing a puppet show is a felony in certain jurisdictions. <laughs> Shut up, Jansen. <laughs> Though amusingly enough, when, uh, you know, when Wedge finally saw through the original Ewok prank, he's like, okay, who's our next, who's our next contestant here for applying to Wraith Squadron? He's a Gamorrean. Yeah, right, Jansen. I fell for the Ewok. I'm not doing it again. No, really. He's a Gamorrean. He got some cyborg implants. He's a genius at math. He's got a little translator droid. Fine, you aren't going to play straight. Send him in. And in the door walks a two and a half meter tall Gamorrean, looking very nauseating with a bright orange flight suit and green Gamorrean skin. <clears throat> Lovely class. <laughs> And Wedge just stares at him for a moment. Jansen walks out the door, salutes, and says, Yub, yub, and walks on off. <laughs> uh, Terlock, yeah, he turned out to be one of the best pilots they had. He could, um, he, he was so good at math, he was able to calculate hyperspace trajectories in his head. They didn't need an astromech droid. Uh, Commander Cottonfluff, greetings from the Emporium. How's it going today? It's going all right. Me and Ghost Tracker are currently in a bit of a race to see who can get to Beagle Point first. And when I say a bit of a race, I mean it's this is about as disorganized as you can get for a race. And Ghost Tracker's fighting with some audio, but still fun to talk to. You know, Xbox peasant and all. Hey. I'm sorry. No, here we, we are accepting of all of all types, console and PC. Paste. I can roll 
with that and playing with my controller. You can't do that with a keyboard on a proper gaming rig. <laughs> we. Next time you should get an ASP. I really should. What about a BBC Micro? Oh, old school. I like I it. Play. <laughs> and uh, Budman, what kind of ship do you put him in? They squeezed him into an X-Wing. <clears throat> it wasn't easy, but they were able to get him into an X-Wing. And then they gave him a sniper rifle made out of an X-Wing's uh, laser cannon. Instead of a standard blaster rifle, he had a full-on military-grade Starfighter-class weapon that he slung around as his rifle. Challenge me. Fly home with a pit stop in Colonia to swap to a Sidewinder. Sure. I'll get back to you on the win. That's where you stop at Colonia, stay all day and get in a Sidewinder and blow it up. Yeah. I'd re <laughs> but then I got it. All the money that I spend to recover the Anaconda is... <laughs> all the money I've made exploring is now wasted on pulling the Anaconda back. Come on. I can just barely make out the... It's my dad's turning. He had lost pictures this time because he doesn't think anyone's using the internet, but like, I'm here. <sighs> Which is neat, Discord has a built-in droid filter. <laughs> <laughs> How many times do I have to fly through neutral stars? <laughs> K class star, good, and refuel the damn tank. And unfortunately, I can't actually make out my, uh. make out my odometer here. Oh, my God. oh I got 32,000 light years to go. That's not. Oh, God, we're gonna be here forever. Emote 5 will be in suit and tie. All right, then. Well done. Uh, Ghost should be dual streaming. Master 10, it'd be nice, but I don't think Ghost has the bandwidth for it. I miss that, yeah. Also, I don't... Well, you can stream off an Xbox, but you need the capture card for it. Um, there was a built-in streaming app called Mixer, but I don't know how well that integrates with Twitch and, yeah, the bandwidth. Uh. <laughs> Oh, okay. I didn't. I did not know there was a built-in streaming for Xbox. My bad. Go okay. show how often I use it. Shoot. <laughs> Unfortunate, really. Uh, I if do. I stream. Oh, sorry. Oh no. Go on. Go on. Um, if I try streaming, like I have a zero point nine upload, like base. Uh, so and you wouldn't get a picture. It would just be like pixels. <laughs> Uh, Astacon, who are you asking? Me? I'm not in Sweden. I'm in Seattle. I'm in Britain, but I was racist in Sweden. Yeah, and I'm originally from Iowa. I only work in outer space.
Which, you know, every once in a while you get one of those, those grand moments where fate just smiles on you. Because my, um, my apartment manager, I was picking up, actually I was picking up the uh, warthog. I was picking up the warthog from the office. It had been delivered and she asked, you know, what, what's in this thing? It said it's a flight controller for, you know, space simulation flying and... She asks, oh, let me guess, you're from outer space. <laughs> just being cute and whatever, and actually, you know, just being able to channel that movie quote, I go, no, I'm from Iowa. I only work in outer space. Of course, my apartment manager also keeps confusing Iowa, Iowa Ohio, and Idaho. Krylani pops in, summoned by a Star Trek quote. Excellent! Welcome to the show! A 0.9 megabit upload rat. <laughs> Is that like the fuel rats? They give you They give you extra bandwidth? Sound evil. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't the garble that made you sound evil. Oh, yeah, I just exceed that. <laughs> if the hamster isn't running on the wheel, nothing gets uploaded. Again, that's Iowa internet. <laughs> Okay, nearly 1,100 light years, 1,090. We're doing that in five <laughs> jumps. <laughs> Holy crap, we're doing 1,090 light years in five jumps. I want to do 1,090 light years, but I mean, I probably could if I want. <sighs> uh, what is your, what's your altitude on the galactic map? That is many light years, and not many jumps. I'm averaging over 200 light years per jump. My altitude is 54. 54? Yeah, if you go up to, say, 1100, that's where the good stuff happens. Spinny boy! Astacon, that, that actually hurts my soul. Uh, Master 10, one moment, let me get clear of the uh, vortex here. Galaxy map. I approve of this Astacon joke. <laughs> uh, right here, you, you see it right here. Uh, negative 2000, 1103, 34380. Uh, basically, XYZ coordinates. Except this is the Y axis because it was... Because the way they arrange XY is ridiculous. It's the XYZ, isn't it? That's weird. Yeah, it's it's. Um, so basically, when they took a look at the, yeah, the last number is the Z axis or the Z axis. But um, no, because the way they did this axis is, they looked at the galactic core from Earth. And then they went, uh-huh, uh they looked at it edge on. The XYZ coordinates here are based on if you were looking at the galaxy edge on. And then, yeah, it just, yeah. yeah. It, 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 yeah. It, it hurts me to, to know that that's how it was arranged, but. So no, you wanna be at, you wanna be at either 1100 or higher, 1100 to 2100, or negative 1100 to negative 2100. And then you will be in a layer of, yeah, the X and Y is the screen, the Y is the up down, yeah. 
Whereas I look at that map and I think the up down is the Z axis. Because I'm looking at the galaxy. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, no, it is. Ah. Uh, this is confusing. I, I know, I'm starting to, I'm starting to get scrambled in here. Math! Yeah. Mathicism. Astro arithmetic. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that too. May as well. Why not? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it's 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 X Z Y. That yeah, basically Master Ten. Because that's the alphabet. <laughs> What? A C B. <laughs> I'm surrounded by crazy people. <laughs> Embrace the crazy. Be the crazy. I tried that. I ended up on Twitch. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's basically an X Z Y interpretation. Yeah. Uh, Uber, X and Y, that's what it's supposed to be, but instead Y is what's above and below, at least according to this galactic mapping. It's all very, very confuzzling, but yes. When you look at the galaxy like it's a clock, the Z is towards and away from you. Are we into harmonic time cube now? Is there like four days in a day? <laughs> yes, when you look at the galaxy from the top down, as they put it in the map interpretation, Z is... Yeah, Uber, that's... Yeah, it's Earth's placement with the backdrop of the core, which is what has screwed up my entire perception of their coordinate plane. So, I ignore it. And when I say I am going Z-positive, that means I am going above the plane. He's getting high. <laughs> that's right. I am 1,100 light years high and going straight. Yes, whoever devised that coordinate system needs... Well, okay, I guess. To be fair, it's the only coordinate system with a proper frame of reference for anybody, unless you want to develop a hyperdrive, but, you know. Nobody seems to be working on that part yet. The good thing about space is you can look at the galaxy side on and claim that whereas you're going up, you're doing this, the X coordinates because it's all relative. So yeah, there's there's nearly 1,100 light years just went away. Realize. Paste. A hundred and ninety-eight jumps towards my destination. Hundred and ninety-eight, okay. Yeah. You're gonna really oh, hate me. On. You're gonna oh, really, really hate me, just so you know. I mean, like, really, really hate me. 
Why you like three jumps away? That even surprise me. <laughs> um, no, not not quite that bad. I am two hundred and thirty-seven jumps away from Beagle Point. What? I'm mad. <laughs> This is why you don't race an anaconda. It doesn't work. Uh, thank you, DH Kitten. You sent me a Discord saying that he's checked my uh, facts. No? Alright. With the help of another, I have been directed to a PvE Conda build. Alright. Um. Oh, Conda. Could you check? Actually, if, what if you're still in the area? Do you mind checking all the Bundu? What's that? Uh. I'm getting a PMs, and he said to talk to him, just talk his stream. Uh, cotton fluff is... Uh, Delta, I'm a little, little <laughs> occupied at the moment, but I, I'll... <laughs> Just bribe Hank with tuna on the keyboard. You monster. How long does it do expansions last? Like, is it five days? Uh, expansions? Oh boy. I've seen them hang up for like a week. But it's supposed to be, I think, I, I think five days. <clears throat> because we're trying to get into an actual D. You okay? Suddenly it sounded like a chipmunk there. Oh boy. I can, I, can, I can hear you. Okay, you're good. Okay, good. The, the fantastic connection of Ghost Tracker 212. <laughs> <laughs> My FSD must be in pain. No, no, Master 10. I just, uh, I just, I pulled over and fixed it. See, it's not, in, it's at 87%. That's good, right? Nothing exploding. Yep. I did it again. I flew through the jet stream again. Why do I this keep doing This is a captain. It? We have a little problem with our entry sequence, so we may experience some slight turbulence and then explode. Flew through the jet stream again? Yeah, it's like every FSD I up, every neutral star I come across, I end up flying through this jet stream like six times, seven times before I actually get charged. I've got a guide on that. It's on the YouTubes. Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I actually learned how to do it with your guide. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously not. <laughs> Because it's taken you six times to do it. <laughs> but no, best best advice I can give is really just approach dead slow and try to get yourself angled so you're kind of going in on the long axis. Resume course. Screaming towards it and not slow down too slow. Oh, I'm here. Okay. Um. Good grief. Galaxy map. 
a hissing noise in my mind. Hmm. Uh, Commander Cotton Fluff. Yes, it was. Okay, 1600 light years. 1,652 in nine jumps. The Jumbaconda is booing the Ass Explorer. Guys, help. <laughs> I really do need that sound effect. I'm sorry, Ghost needs that sound effect. <laughs> oh no, I... Oh. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, probably. System map. Well, this is an astonishing pile of nothing. Moving right along. Hydrogen, hydrogen, and failed hydrogen. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Hurry, ghost. Distract that conda in its travel. Avert his attention towards something shiny. <laughs> should I get out and push? Maybe you should. Who's keeping the count of passengers I've ejected? <laughs> and it's five, isn't it? Five or I six? I think it's five, yeah, five. And Hank's ejected one Gret. <laughs> because Hank. Has anyone asked if you're there yet today? I dare you. Are you there yet? Halsey Fox, sounds like the hyperdrive carburetor flooded again. Well, yeah, that's why you need the hydro spanner to fix the hydro lock. No. Next question. And now Cotton Fluff is directly messaging me, are we there yet? No. Actually, no, I take it back. Cotton, we're here. We have arrived at Beagle Point. There's the airlock. Have a look outside. Cotton, keep messaging him. He might get so mad he gets distracted. <laughs> You see, that's not dead slow. <laughs> yeah, eject him into the neutron star. It's worked before. Don't think I won't do it again. HK-51? You mean the pale imitation of the proper assassin droid? <clears throat> Statement. Pale imitation. <laughs> also, for those who've been following the, um, the latest run of Marvel's Star Wars comics since they've got the license back, holy crap, Triple Zero and BT-1 are just scary, scary droids. Triple Zero, take a... 3PO tile, uh, styled protocol droid and stick a stick the protocols and equipment for a professional torturer in there. 
And then BT-1, the Blastromech droid. Flamethrowers, missile launchers, shrapnel grenades. One minigun. Yeah, the things you need for a fun time. <laughs> yeah. Commander's Log, date 3304. Still floating in space. Saw a hamster, wondering if someone's internet might be slow somewhere. Maybe someone will find me someday. Yep. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Just that indignant squeak when I, uh... I love that, that indignant squeak when I said that I was like 200 and some jumps from Beagle. <laughs> Was it a space hamster? Ooh, miniature giant space hamster. Evil, meet my sword! You know, I'm quite sword glad we didn't go with the idea of um, the forfeits because I would be fucked. <laughs> 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 uh, Metarol, anyone know what killed off the Guardians? Their own inventions. Yeah. Meet the AI, yay! Yeah, their, their weapon AI got a little too smart, and the weapons decided the Guardians were the biggest threat to local space and decided to end that threat. Because they were programmed with great... with... with, with great reverence for nature. And then the Guardian second Civil War, and... yeah. Ooh, spinny! We have discovered Maximum Wub. Oh my god, stop gar garbling? There you Maybe? go. Garble? Yeah, I got. <laughs> Hundred and eighty seven jumps to just get to the like to the edge of the uh Scumpton Centaurus arm. And then there's you like two hundred to get the V. <laughs> oh, uh. Well tomorrow you get a bit of a head start. I got a head start tonight. <laughs> well tomorrow you get more head start. Ooh, what is that? Son of a Ooh, it's one of those. They're like little mini nebulas. Um, yeah, I found I one. I've just gotta figure out where the hell it's at. Okay, current location is here. <clears throat> Probably a neutron star. That's what mine was, anyway. Yeah, it's. I'm not aimed at it though. Um. Okay, hold on. I can figure out. It's actually behind me a ways. That doesn't help my situation much, does it? So, Cotton Fluff, you know how you said that I should, you know, maybe if she distracted me with something shiny? Um, <laughs> I think we just found the shiny. Is that you? Look like it. There's very nope. bright stars in this area. It's lovely to look at. Okay, it is. Where is it in relative to that? Okay, it's it's up. It's up above the galactic plane, I believe. No, Skybox CXE is working just fine.
There you are. Sixty six light years. Uh, it's not a wolf, it's a black hole. It's a micro nebula around a black hole. Nebulites. Yeah. <laughs> Nebulites. <laughs> Nebula chan. <laughs> Probably discovered. System map. Oh, yep. <laughs> discovered. <sighs> Galaxy map. Very beautiful, even on 160p. <laughs> yeah. Now let's just orbit the black hole real quick with this backdrop. Take a photo. Hmm. How do you do it? Screen capture it. It's like shift object. Ow! Oh, crap, I made an umlaut. Yep, we just nose booped. Just booped the black hole. Okay, let's get back to where I was. I'm jumping confess. <laughs> Alright, this is gonna look a little weird when we bounce out of this black hole. And then come out of the, uh, and they come out of their jumps. It's like everything's <laughs> just suddenly there. Sproing. <laughs> yeah, that was a tiny little black hole. Usually the, uh, the, the effect lasts a little bit longer there. How are we doing on... Damn. This message is irrelevant! Black hole to year. Estimated profit, thank you so much for the 200 bits. Black hole cheer. Hmm, I think that's the name of my Soundgarden tribute band. Got a clip for you. All right, what do you got? Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, let's see here. There you go. Paste.
Oh, that's only 347 light years away now? Screw that. Paste. Ray, hello! Okay, 11... 1200 light years. Okay. Six jumps. <laughs> I'm being bullied by an anaconda still, guys. Come on. Go. Take this chance to donate to the abused and neglected Asterix War Charity. Their time has <laughs> come and gone. <laughs> Doesn't even have explorer in its name. <laughs> oh dear, Master Ten. Sorry about that. Budman, ship goes better with the engines turned on. Thanks, Professor. Has Rick Romero ever played Elite Dangerous? Because I think we just met him here. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully everybody here is familiar with Rick Romero. Like the patron saint of the obvious. Stars. Yeah. Yep. This this region is lousy with them, but again, it's also lousy with black holes and neutron stars, so who am I to complain? Well, then again, you're in a totally different region than me, so never mind. I keep thinking I we are relatively near each other. Oh. What's that? Sorry. Ran over you there. <laughs> Young as the stars get, but there's no neutron and black holes. Oh, gobble. Gobble, gobble. Type 10, floating fortress, all multi cannon, daka daka build, all overcharged, one corrosive, and a healthy mix of autoloaders and experimentals. Uh. <laughs> so basically, you want to like look like. Time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say, you're gonna look like the Death Star on Yavin Day. Or, you know, downtown Baghdad the day Desert Storm launched. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was like the closer you got to the core, the younger the stars got. But it seems to be like more dead stars or stellar remnants. Well, yeah, but given the high density of stuff we're going through, I mean, uh, just a much higher sample size. Oh, my first L class in a while. No, 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 get away from the heaty ball. <laughs> Get away, Get away from, from the big space heater. Yeah. Oh, literally. <laughs> I see what you did there. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, Master 10, what if it's a real bus? Uh,
System map. System. There we go. Huh. All kinds of interesting, but not interesting enough to warrant my stay. But it should be. It might give me a chance to catch up. <laughs> Uh, what is my distance? I can't actually see... Well, let me load up Captain's Log here. Um, doo -doo -doo. I am 27,000 light years from Beagle Point. Uh, I am. My, my game wants to load it. Uh, oh, I have no idea that. <laughs> System map. I'm twenty eight thousand. Twenty nine. Twenty nine percent. Oh, I'm I'm widening the gap. I'll catch up tomorrow. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I said this yesterday. <laughs> Well, okay, you want to know some bad news? Remember when, when I had to end the stream and you said you were still 170 jumps away from our destination? Oh, yeah. Um, it only took me 196 jumps to get from Seoul to Beagle. Or, Seoul, Seoul to Sag A. Wait, how? <laughs> Magic. The cow is hacking, guys, we're playing. I'm using third party hacks. <laughs> and clever use of the copy and paste keys. <laughs> He's doing a weird thing where he puts control C and control P. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't forget Alt-Tab, because I'm pretty sure Frontier actually runs a small company on the side that builds those keys. <laughs> this is another benefit of being on the Xbox. I can just have all the third-party stuff on the side of me. <laughs> yeah. Can you Control-C and Control-V it over to the Xbox? Uh... That's what I thought. <laughs> Wait, wait. Um, none of that came through. Can you try it in the form of an interpretive oh. dance? So the microphone isn't the biggest problem. The biggest problem is... <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> Using my phone and smart glass, I might be able to copy and paste to Xbox. Okay. Possibly. Possibly. That's actually that's actually a very interesting uh interesting idea. So your homework for today is to see if that works. Unless you don't want to. It's kinda how I did homework. Just kind of explain some of my math grades. Hmm. My girlfriend's watching the stream and she's like, you giggle too much. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'd rather have somebody giggle too much than just, you know, scream and rant all the time. That's my job. Sure. I major, maybe they don't giggle enough. I like the cut of your gibberish, sir. 
I'm the source code to your saga. You're the what to the what? Missed that. I'm, I'm, the, I'm your source. I'm ah. your source too. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. I'm the bright side that loves FDF. <laughs> yeah, it requires special scissors to cut gibberish. <laughs> I believe it requires Occam's razor. But yeah, I was, I was jumping all like cutting through a, a jet stream three or four times, not realizing I'd already charged up my FSD. <laughs> I have been clapped. He's still clapping. <laughs> Well, this one would also apply. This one would also apply, I suppose. I love that <laughs> clip. I told a friend I, I I rely on my Yosemite Sam button, and she said, "You have a Yosemite Sam button." Well, yes, doesn't everybody? <laughs> Is this not normal? Tried to cut us dinner once, that's true. Unfortunately, Pavlov prepared it for him. You will have to excuse me, I'm somewhat xenophobic. I don't like philosophers. What is the sound of one hand clapping? <laughs> Commander Cotton Fluff got something to play when you're flying. It's a short classic. May I post a link? Um, hold on. I mean, yeah, post the link. Um, let's see here. But given, I mean, given some of the connection going on, I don't want to task it any more than, any more than absolute. And I'm age. Oh, my favorite football team is playing right now. Huh. 114 minutes and it's nil nil. Oh, that's good. <laughs> hey, best buddy. Oh, it's you. The Bibliophilus, thank you so much for the resub. Seven months. Greatly appreciated. Leave even ghost will. Leave even ghost will love it. Yeah, there. Unfortunately, I mean, we're just kind of our our connections seem to be hanging on by a shoestring. <clears throat> I think that's more my end than it is yours. <laughs> I don't know because every because it seems like you only really garble when I am going into the neutron stream. Hmm. So I am wondering what is going on there. And please throw some throw some love, throw some hype, throw some very small spaceship cows into the uh, into the chat. As you can see, the new the new logo, which is actually going to be the new emote, the new little saluting emote, the, the saluting moo. Commander Hugs, he is a Hugs Bison. <laughs> I understand the Internet hamsters last seen two thousand light years behind you. <laughs> Uh, 
pedal faster. It's harder and harder to keep a connection the further and further you will get from the bubble. <laughs> Yeah, but then as you start leaving the uh, core segments, it starts to improve. Uh, less interference. Yeah, less of the computer trying to melt as it processes everything. Galaxy map. Actually, here's a very good question. Where in the blinkety hell am I? Am I coming across as legible? Because I'm get, like, someone yeah. just messaged me saying they can't understand me. Hmm. Uh, then again, it might be just because they're... Uh. Uh, I've still got a ways to go. I think I diverted a little bit too far off to the right. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't do that, I'd probably be where you are. Well, I mean, you're still only like 2,000 light years back from from the ultimate target, so... I mean, it's not like you... Yeah, you know, It's not like you super diverted, like, backwards 3,000 light years. And back in the back of Colonia, just be like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Huh, this place looks awfully familiar. <laughs> oh, son of a... <laughs> Galaxy map. Just found a terraforming so candidate around a brown dwarf. Hmm. A terraforming around a brown dwarf? Or is it L class? Yeah, what, what's the class on that brown dwarf? Nine hundred and some light years in four jumps. <laughs> I love the, the neutron highway. It's, it's, it's beautiful. I love it. T-type. Oh. I didn't even know you could terraform around him. Well, I mean, it's going to stay warm forever. Hmm. What's that methane? Primarily methane, isn't it? Well, either way, I mean, it's going to be throwing out heat. Doesn't matter what it's... What, doesn't matter what the gas is if it's just... You know, all thermal emission. I, yeah. Even has a very eccentric orbit. Huh. Okay, that is looking less and less terraformable, but... Okay. <laughs> Maybe it goes for a period where it is terraformable, and the game just can't comprehend. <laughs> well, that is entirely possible. Ray, had an issue with a student's parent, not at the stop. Oh! Oh, makes sense considering there's another brown dwarf nearby and the main star is 2,000 light seconds away. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> that sounds like, between the combination of the three stars, that should be enough heat. Should be enough heat. Sorry, what's that ghost? Yes, I was just confirming what you were saying. But I'm about to clock out. Uh, 
clock out. All right, Ray. Well, if you come back on later, <laughs> you'll be welcome. If you don't come back later, you won't. Wait, no. Um, no, Ghost hasn't caught up yet. I was ahead by 3.6k to begin with. <laughs> yeah, Ghost was actually ahead by 6,000 light years. So I've, what, I've caught up by 8,000 light years? Not by doing that, I won't. Wait, there it is. <laughs> Astacon, when I went to Beagle, it took me three months to get there and back. Were you cannonballing it though, or were you actually stopping to do, you know, exploration and things? <laughs> have you heard the one about the tortoise and the hare? I have. That's why I'm not taking any naps. <laughs> yeah, you spent time looking through each star? Yeah. I mean, I would, but I've got a race going on here. And the jump range is only 42 light years. Yeah, that does not help the situation much. Ooh, heading to Ada Karina. Nice. Forty-two light years is not what mine. No. How much is it, the lady? Oh, oh sorry, go on. Uh, how, how much is it that the Guardian boosters boost your FSD? Uh, approximately two light years per class. So a class one will boost you by two oh, light years. Okay. A class five will boost ten. So fifty-two. Yeah, thereabouts. Now made it with a uh, 34, maybe a 37 light year, light year Asp Explorer back in the day. Huh. Oh, here's that blue thing that you were talking about. Oh, that's a very bright blue. I don't think that's the same one. That... Hello. Same type, probably different location, that... because otherwise you are. Otherwise, you would have had to come back across my path. We took totally different paths. Very, you are. Yeah. Grand Guardian list, full set of shields, engines, weapons. So a well-prepared Asp Explorer. Yeah, I've got... I've got a Taipan. Which probably has stronger shields than the uh, mothership. Wait, pirates spawned at the tourist beacon at Beagle? Oh, you're in the condo. Okay, even better. Sorry, I thought you were talking. I thought earlier you said how, you know, amazing, amazing the Asp Explorer was. My bad. You know, I do have a Taipan on board. Once we go to the tourist beacon at Beagle. I may see if I can get it. I may see if I can get an air to air kill. Head Beagle Point. Who would I turn that bounty <gasps> in with? Colonial Council? Maybe? Maybe? Or they just. Uh, no, Astacon, I don't have any cargo, which means I can pick and choose. Ah, okay, you were carrying a few shock stills. Gotcha. Lawless, so no bounties without a scanner. Go! Oh! <laughs> 
that's a very front. I'm gonna have to go back there when I'm on my way back. Just need to find him. Let's see if I can find a thing here quick. Behind me and to my right. It's somewhere over here. Simo like games. Hello, everybody. Just managed to fight off a Conda and FDL. Well done. Be funny if one of you forgot the scoop. Uh, well, you wouldn't have made it very far. <laughs> about ten jumps and you're like, oh, I thought it. <laughs> <laughs> Regrets. <laughs> Finally managed to unlock McCutter. Congrats. You know, that thing's a cast iron pita to take care of. It's plotting via habitable systems. Got to my refuel system, there were no large. Oh. No large landing pads. Lassius, are you on the X Force? I can't remember. Plotting 15k. Uh, any idea where some good source and return missions are right now? Oh boy. Ah, uh, not a clue, unfortunately. I mean, if you need the money, you could always sell your cutter. Okay. <laughs> right, right, right. I know, I know. Reroll, PAA D6-148. <sighs> Trying to get back over one billion credits. You pauper, you. <laughs> I'm only at one for four. I'm poor. <laughs> and again, my assets are like one point nine five nine point five one four point three two five. So, <laughs> nearly two billion in assets. Credits spent on outfitting twenty eight billion. <laughs> well, you know, it's only money, easy come, easy go. My mic broke just then it squeak. <laughs> No. 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 <laughs> it is, Ray. It's a stupid good. <laughs> 
dirty Turkish hard to back flag me for to sell a bucket of Martin, push a little of Burton, double bush tonight, he's Martin, he's not a fool. <laughs> I will not be beat by some pile of degenerate protonic matter. I'm charging my damn jump drive off this white dwarf. Victory for the lizard queen. <sighs> I got the charge. Oh. Resume course. Whenever I laugh or something, my mic seems to just peak the hell out. I don't know what that is. Hopefully when I can get the my, my good mic, which has a pop filter and nice speakers. <laughs> and it's actually comfy. <laughs> Did you forget to remove them from your route? I didn't think I needed to. I, they, they, mm, stupid white dwarf stars. <laughs> Don't you only get like a 25% bonus off your drive yes. as well? So it's insult and injury. Yeah, 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 I suppose I should. Galaxy map. I thought they thought fell under the same category as neutral stars. Like, mm. Oh yeah, that's well let's let's double check here. No, white dwarfs and non sequence are in different categories. Oh. Damn it, you saw from my ruse. I've got morons on my team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is don't this... do don't 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 do what did we learn? Well, we learned that I need to have more family-friendly language on my show. Why are we going via brown dwarves? Look, Astacon, I'm just... I... I... <clears throat> Do not question the move! <clears throat> I... Blue stars, white type, T type, male type, keep the M type. Right. We're keeping everything else just because they are neat. Because they are neat and nifty to look at. <laughs> Sideshow Bob and the Rakes. Yes, I, I would agree with that. Resume course. Wait a minute. Why am I only... No. We are not resuming course. We are... We kind of are, but we're going something else here. Galaxy map. <laughs> Paste. <laughs> 2,000 light years. 10 jumps. All right, Astacon. 
You know what? I'll just get my revenge that way. I'm really bad at judging when to talk. <laughs> no, no, that's 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 me. That's me. Uh, Commander Cotton's cl Cotton Fluff, scroll up. I saw that. You had damage was good, hole was shredded like it was made of cheese, still turns like a tub of lard stuck in tar. Well, yes, it's a type 10. You repeat yourself there, sir. Signing off. Good night to you both. All right, take care, Commander. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. Have a good one, and, uh, well done on making a very effective type 10 fortress. The Titanium Overcast. And Lashios, I'm not grumpy much. I am sunshine and puppies and cute little... Actually, no, I've seen Yuki. She can be a holy terror when she gets pissed off. I take it back. System map. Four T-10s in a box formation with all turrets. Ooh, that gives me evil ideas. Of course, I still haven't equipped my my cutter properly. Do I really need to go and buy a T-10 just on a one-off mad science idea? Really? Yes, no, that's exactly how everything happens. <laughs> I hate that you're right. <laughs> Everybody here agreeing, damn it. <laughs> I have the public support. Well, maybe the public can get out and push you to the lead. Hey! <laughs> I imagine you're making some kind of gesture at me, but... Well, fortunately, the camera's off. Just navigation fixing your control again. <laughs> Give you another white dwarf. <laughs> uh, I don't have the mats to get a matching T10 right now. Yeah. And would you really want to throw the mats into a T10? Really? Really, really? I mean, you may as well just buy a Coriolis. Galaxy map. Now I want a Coriolis and I want to name it the Death Star. <laughs> want a Death Hexagon. No, no, my pair of chiefs still need finishing touches. You still haven't wrapped up the smoke wagon? I thought you wrapped that up months ago. Four percent. Right. I should probably see about fixing the jump drive at some point. What am I? Oh, eighty-four percent. Huh. Wait a minute. Why is it galaxy map? What did you break? That's a very good question. <laughs> oh, 
Hope you remember if you damage your power unit, you can't fix it. I know. I know. Yeah, I mean, the only way you can really damage the power plant to that degree is by crashing into a star repeatedly. Like, you know, the stellar equivalent of bashing your head against a wall. I mean, I've done some dumb things, but... To do that, I'd have to crash into the same star five or six or twenty times in a row. I think my plant's at 95%. Even at 96, I can't read it. I gobbled towards the end, yay. Again, when I was flying through the neutron star. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Space Brick, is there a star system with binary neutrons really close to each other? Yes, there is. I just don't have the link up for where it is. Doesn't the power plant only start malfunctioning at the same place as everyone else, or is it just where or everything else? Does it, yeah, it, does it, it starts malfunctioning like 80% or so, I think. Uh, space Brick, what about black holes? Um, HIP 63835. You have binary black holes for the C and D stars. Remember the first time you took a wing assassination? Yes, I do. That's a very, very weak atmosphere. <laughs> Yeah, that just means it has 0 0.009 atmospheres. <clears throat> Mr. Burns security uh, social security number 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 2. Damn, Roosevelt. <laughs> Welcome back, Astacon. Social security numbers confuse me. I don't get them. Knowing Burns, his locks are probably something like 666, yeah. <laughs> I remember the episode where he was dating Marge's mother and she just, you know kind of chuckles and goes, Oh, you're the devil himself. Who told you? <laughs> uh, Drigtal... Yes, it's not a necessarily, I mean, there is a, there is a specific set of very, very arcane calculations to be used when assigning an SSN. I mean, I'm wondering, are you serious when you're, you know, <laughs> uh, oh well. And I'm not American as well, that's the key thing. Yeah. In Britain. I'm not sure about the rest of Europe, but in Britain we use national insurance numbers. So it's like XX 00000X. And they mean very little. Like, you can. They're meant for like one thing. Sierra Bravo 1, hello there. How you doing? What's a good word?
Yeah, X, X, zero, 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 X, yeah. Same thing, different letters. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought they were mainly for um, benefits. I don't know what they have to. Bad day, broken hand from an upset horse. Oh no. Oh no. I'm both Asicon. Uh, I'm a dual citizen. Swedish. <laughs> uh, why does America do the social security number thing? It's kind of a bad thing for one thing to be so important. It's, well, it's also a, you know, it, uh, excuse me. Um, oh, holy crap. Sorry, I just looked at the, um, how many stars are around here, and there don't seem to be any. Uh, Astrakhan, she, uh, she said dual citizenship, Swedish and British. There's only two star systems here on the map, according to this. Are you in the space between arms? Kinda, sorta. I'm on the very edge of the arm, moving, moving towards the gap. See, so yeah. Once you cross that gap, that's where I planned on finishing. I don't know. Based. Yeah, why would you speak Norwegian? <laughs> so I can say, please, no more Ludafisk. <laughs> Yeah, I've, well, actually, that high up, am I still that high up? I guess I am, I'm a thousand light years high. That would, that would, uh, make some of the difference there. Oh, we're kind of relative to each other, like... Okay, I need to fix the damn jump drive is what I need to do. If I'm on my system, it's, uh, J-O-O-T-H-E. TXLLC 7 385. There you go. Alright. Um, Sierra Bravo. We, we aren't winged up because okay. she's on she's on Xbox and I'm on uh, I'm on PC. Let me get scooped up. Alright, take care. <laughs> uh, speaking of Norwegian, anyone else watch Fortitude? Uh, no. Let's see here. TXL. Okay, let me get this post around. Galaxy map. Ludofisk. Yeah, yeah, Ludofisk is. Yeah, it's. It's the devil's in de the devil's food. That's your T. Wait, you said T X L. Yeah, T X L. Also, if you want to talk about devil's food, it's stir <laughs> strumming. That's where it's really at. Okay, you are here. Oh, I am an entire arm and gap beyond you. Wait, what? Oh. I misread this. <laughs> oh no. Um. So here's the race update. I'm being beaten again. By <laughs> 5,000 light years. Wait, stop. Stop. I had a free <laughs> oh. Drop down. Fix the damn ship. Oh, yeah. No, don't fix the ship. <laughs> Quiet, you. Keep going. Oh, <laughs> uh, Halsey, I can only... The navigation demands it. 
Uh, Halsey, I can only imagine it's some kind of penance, maybe? I, I don't know. But yes, I remember Christmas one year where my grandma Holman, who who um actually came from Norway, who um prepared Ludafisk for all of us. And then said the blessing in Norwegian, and my mother asked, What was that? My dad replied, Oh, please, God, don't let there be any more lutefisk. The translation was off, but the meaning was quite accurate. Speaking of fixing stuff, just got up and cl up close and personal with a star. Do. Oh! That's here. my how, specialty. How far are we? <sighs> we are twenty-one thousand light years from Beagle Point. Well, twenty twenty-one and high change, twenty-two round up. Nineteen is about twenty-seven. <laughs> Oh, is that the uh, Astacon? Is that the one with the? Uh, is that the shark? Like the uh, fermented, no, fermented shark that was left out in the open for too long, and basically a contest to see how many it's... ways you could defile the corpse. <laughs> That's how it started. It's um fermented, like um, it's some kind of fish. And basically, like buildings have been evacuated with where the like the water has been spilled and it's created such a smell. And people consider this like a Swedish. People consider this like a Swedish delicacy. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's just fermented anything, honestly. Or, as was once said in an exalted campaign when trying to figure out what to brew, anything ferments. <laughs> Sans and Game was trying to cook me, and my recent trip had kept putting me in binary stars that were three light seconds apart. It's a bad that I think that is really, really neat. Trying to make him hot like Cat Sans and... <laughs> I fixed the damn jump drive. Another 300 light years. Away we go. I won't let your lies tempt me. Do not open the can inside. Bud man, I wouldn't open that up in a. I wouldn't open that up in a biohazard disposal area. I'd just say nope and burn the building down. Did I tell about the time where um, I actually fell in a bio waste bin? I can't remember. Oh god. Yeah, that wasn't fun. I... Yeah. Did you get superpowers at least? <laughs> No, but I got like a blood all over my favorite genre. <laughs> I mean, unless I have like telekinetic powers now, that I just don't know about. I ferment dandelions for wine. Old recipe from my grandmother during Prohibition. It's nasty, but it does the job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The old old recipe from my I grandparents was you. like. Hobo stew. You ever tried to tenderize a hobo? Star, not paying attention. Uh. So <laughs> yeah, you did get the power of the puns, that's true. <laughs> I was reading chat and I just flew straight into a star. That was fun. And there's bathtub gin, but that can actually kill. Yes, it can. 
Meow and I were just watching a special on um, the various various industrial poisons that uh, kind of made made U.S. history. Like, um, what was it? Um, people, you know, somebody working for, um, I think it was Mobile or Mobile, and they were making uh, leaded gasoline, and how the original lab. Like, a lot of the member of the lab staff just went absolutely loopy. Uh, Sanson, well, the hobo was surprised. Uh, something else was mentioned was, um, well, during Prohibition when... When people were making, um, you know, were actually throwing denatured alcohol into their... Into their gin. Yeah. There was actually a conspiracy to kill a man by giving him all kinds of poisoned alcohol. He took something like... I think he drank a fifth of denatured alcohol and all it did was uh, make him a little sleepy. The man refused to die. Let's see if I can look this up now. Reminds me of Raspian. Toilet bowl gin. That's where it's really at. Your former firefighter, most famous for surviving a number of murder attempts on his life by five acquaintances trying to commit life insurance fraud. And uh, let's see here. Failed murder attempts. Um, let's see here. He was at the time alcoholic and homeless. Five men who were acquainted with him uh, made a plan to bring about his death by getting him to drink himself in to death in order to collect life insurance. The first part of the plot was successful, presumably achieved with the aid of a corrupt insurance agent, and they stood to gain over $3,500. $66,000 by 2017 standards, if he died an accidental death. Uh, let's see here. One of the guys owned a speakeasy, and uh, let's see here, gave him unlimited credit, thinking he'd drink himself to death. Uh, he drank for the majority of his waking day, but it didn't kill him. So they substituted his liquor with antifreeze, but he continued drinking with no problems. Then they substituted that with turpentine, then horse liniment, then rat poison, and it didn't do a thing to him. So then they tried oysters soaked in wood alcohol. Um, then they decided to freeze him to death. The temperature reached negative uh, 26 C one night. They, he drank until he passed out got carried to a park, dumped in the snow, and had five gallons of water poured on his bare chest. Uh, he showed up back at the bar the next morning for his drink. The next attempt came when they hit him with a taxi, moving at 45 miles an hour. This put him in the hospital for three weeks with some broken bones. Then he showed up at the bar again after his time in the hospital. <laughs> So then, they, um, he passed out, they took him to somebody else's place, put a hose in his mouth, connected to the gas jet, and turned it on. That finally killed him. <laughs> and they say alcohol is bad for <laughs> that man is a committed drinker. Yes, he is. Well, I mean, they fed him so much antifreeze, he survived the exposure. The health benefits of alcohol are well known, estimated profit. The health benefits of turpentine, less so. <laughs> All right, 
where am I? Bua Eozi, right. Galaxy map. Paste. Paste. Thank you. Okay, 2,700 light years. Calculating now. It's chugga chugga chugging away. There we go. We've got a course. Dude, your computer is so much faster than the Xbox. <laughs> well, I, I I treated it well, you know. Push-ups, sit-ups, and plenty of juice. Okay, still not bad. Right. 20, 2,700 light years, and across a very sparse region, it's only 37 jumps. Good. This is a good boat. Actually, somebody was saying I should try to go to Salome's Reach. I've got 15 small FSD boosts. Could be enough. Large, I might try as well. Don't mention exercise. My life is screaming at me to do that. Sorry, Sanson. Uh, Desert Dude. Yeah, I was at, um, I was around 40,000 light years away from Beagle. So we've covered what? Yeah, we've covered about 20,000 light years today. Actually, 23,000 light years based on the odometer. System map. Yeah, this thing moves. It's been slightly modified. Slightly, possibly hazardously modified. Well, you just get further and further ahead of me. <laughs> well, tomorrow, tomorrow I'm not going to be on for that long. I think I'm going to start at 11. And I'm going to go to about, I'm only going to go for a couple hours tomorrow because I got some appointments that uh, I <laughs> very, um, what do I want to say, foolishly scheduled for those times. But they were the only times available, so, you know, damned if I do and damned if I don't. See, I'm going to go for two hours tomorrow and then, so there's your chance. That's a, And it, you're probably going to make it to Beagle Point tomorrow. I win on the technicality that you had appointments. I'm happy with that. The ones I win. <laughs> yeah. Technically correct. The best kind of correct. <laughs> Halsey, there's only one solution at this point. Cheat. It's not cheating. I'm just not going to be there. Unless I am. Maybe I'll come back. I don't know. <laughs> Secretly jumping in the background. <laughs> By God, that's Moe's music! <laughs> uh, Jatton666, thank you so much for the follow. 
Or should I just call you Beast? Either way, welcome aboard, welcome to the crew, pull up a seat, and enjoy your stay. As God is my witness, that ship is broken in half. <laughs> I have to say that name's Jaten, but that's just my Swedish name. So. Yeah, is it Jaten or Jaten? Is it the A or the A? Either way. Just just trying to get the pronunciation right. System map. Nope. side of the galaxy for systems so like they seem to be more like words <laughs> they seem to be more closely related to words rather than just a random jumble of uh, letters yeah yeah i know what you mean here and i prefer jaten all right we'll do Actually, I think I'll call you whatever you like, and so you are Jaten. Welcome aboard. <clears throat> Asked about the beast part because I've got a cat who's basically the beast. You seem to have his number. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call him whatever you like. Uh, whatever you like, because this was us. Call me whatever you like. Susan Sprinkle, <laughs> thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the crew. Pull up a seat. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, enjoy your stay. I'm going to enjoy this water. Because I, I apparently need it. <sighs> and yes, if you're just joining in, I am flying with Commander Ghost Tracker 212. And we're in a little bit of a... We made a friendly wager. Made a friendly wager to see who could get to Beagle Point first, because neither one of us had been there. I don't have a cat. I have a small mount. That's true. <laughs> You'll be happy to know that there was no damage to the Roomba that Hank was dragging around yesterday. He didn't kill it, he just captured it. Playing with his prey. Yeah, well... <laughs> Has even one of your cats like sat on the room as it goes about? That would be adorable. Meow, meow, meow. Onwards. <laughs> you just see Hank like go across your doorway, sitting on the room that. Just staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. uh, and Sanson has an announcement. Any PC folks near Narvert? They are running trade missions later and they've got space for two more if you want to get in on the great Narvert money-making scheme. <laughs> System map. Well, this is weird. Whoa. What a weird system. Oh, there's a there's an L class that's apparently bigger than this N class. Well, the exact more gravitational pull than this N class. Hmm. Interesting. So that one system I found was like the there was an A class orbiting an F class. What was that I found once? It was a um, 
I, I swear it was a gas giant orbiting a brown dwarf, but the gas giant was bigger. It's like the brown dwarf was using it for warmth. <laughs> kind of like also when you go skydiving, let's face it, the helmet is wearing you for protection. <laughs> <laughs> Nope, well, hit the I'm ground at a thousand miles an hour, his, his knees telescoped up into his armpits, but the helmet's <laughs> fine. Slightly stained, but fine. <laughs> Actually, no, the telescoping knees, that was me helping my friend move a, uh, a, a widescreen HD tube TV. Tube, What's that? Yeah. Did you say it was a cat the rain tube. <laughs> yeah, it was a widescreen CRT HDTV. Which tells you just how much of a friend I was. Oh yeah, this <laughs> this was this was a while back, Prophet. Down a flight of stairs. And you know what? The next time he moved, I paid him to buy a new TV. Here, here's a housewarming present. Buy a modern TV. Tube TVs and hide a beds. The two banes of my existence. I used to help my grandfather. He was an auctioneer. And he would do house sales for a lot of a lot of elderly folks, a lot of elderly farmers. Everybody always had a damn hide a bed built into a couch. You know the you know the kind built with cast iron with a nice little uh, concrete mattress stuffing. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they always had to go either you know down from upstairs or up from the attic. And unfortunately, I mean, oh well, I mean Oh, uh, there was some, some little old lady who, every day of her life, she wrapped yarn around a coat hanger and saved it. <laughs> and then she passed away at age 107. Do you know how many yarn coat hangers... <laughs> <laughs> and she wanted them sold. Her last wishes were they be sold on an individual basis. <sighs> that sale went on for a while. <laughs> Lady's dead. She won't know. Yeah, but Grandpa was one of those people that actually, you know, adhered to people's last wishes. Fortunately, somebody came up with the idea of... You know, just, yes, I will buy them by individual boxes. How about that? <laughs> yeah, freaking moral codes. Dang it. People with principles. <laughs> Instead of saying, like, you're buying 30, you could just say, I want one of these 30 times, and you're technically just buying it. Yeah. 30 yeah. times individually. <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, by by the end of box number 20, he just said, I'm going to close my eyes and take a really long blink. <laughs> Joan Crawford. Yeah, my pro typing system. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Yarn hanger barn. <laughs> I, you know, I do not doubt that there's actually a place like that. Probably with superfluous ease added in. Oh, how 
far have we flown today? We got... Jesus. We've flown... We've flown, uh, 24,000 light years today. Is a broken can opener a can't opener? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> and probably somewhere in Ohio. I don't know why Ohio. It sounds like something would be there. Ohio, the place with the largest proportion of people who want to get off this planet. What is it about Ohio that causes so many people to want to get off Earth? I could say that about like a lot of places. <laughs> is Cincinnati really that like bad? A... Oh. <laughs> if I... If they did like a, a thing where like... If you had to volunteer to get onto Mars, I would just straight away. Uh, Pogor, do you play with a voice controller? Um, I do. I, I play with voice attack, if that's what you mean. Um, I do have... I've just got it muted right now, so it's not giving any special commands. Or you can't hear anything. Because they get a little chatty and, well, with, with Ghost Tracker here on the line, I didn't want to have to compete with her and my audio control setup. System map. But yeah, I do have, yeah, I do have um, voice attack running, as well as some, some special uh, voice attack packs from HCS Voice Packs. There we go. I've really got to update that. And I'm on Xbox, I don't have anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could always use uh, the Connect, and try to apply commands. <laughs> If a Mars trip becomes available, I'm volunteering to be a janitor. If a Mars trip becomes available, I'm volunteering to be a pilot. <laughs> he said connect. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had one for a while, and I was playing... Um, she made it all the way through. She made it through Mass Effect 2 and 3 despite my best efforts. By which I mean you know, I, I would I would be conversing with somebody in the background, I'd say, oh that's cool. And from the other room, I would hear Nyao suddenly scream, damn it! Because my saying cool would have switched the gun over to ice ammo. <laughs> Also, she hated it when I was uh, talking Star Wars and Star Trek with friends because anytime I mentioned warp, it switched to warp ammo. I do believe she got a good 30-yard uh, toss on that uh, connect when she got fed up with it. Like, I saw her disconnect it, take it out to the park, Sweetie, what's going on? No, no, no problem. I'll be right back. Just gotta take care of a thing. <clears throat> Since we live, we live across the park and across the street from a Best Buy, basically, she just threw it there. <laughs> give it a toss. Walk over to it. Give it another toss. Walk over to it. Turned it in at the Best Buy, I'd like to recycle some crappy electronics. Yes, ma'am. Sierra. I mean, 
You'd be immortalized in history. I mean, I'd rather go with the actual immortality, but that's not on the that's not on the table yet. Working on it. Not there yet. Mine, mine wants to be eaten more. Like, my want to go to Mars is strictly to do with, like, my adoration of space. I would love to, like, step on, like, a new planet and, like, see a new atmosphere and see... Well, you do all the work, first of all. I mean, yeah. You'd, you'd have people pointing at that and going, you know, so-and-so built that. Or, you know, so-and-so laid the groundwork for the first... You know, for the colony. Or maybe in my case, so-and-so dug that hole with explosives. <laughs> Betty didn't run any faster. The first accidental death from the colony. That's, that's, that that's they how you know get of. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also have to realize that we may not only be the first trip, but perhaps the last. Cool! First human to die on an alien planet. I mean, there are better ways to spend one's life, but not nearly as many that get you in the history books. I am perhaps a little twisted, though, just so you know. Let's not examine it too far, I guess, or too closely. Short story read about this. During the first trip to Mars, World War III began and they were not informed. Well, you know, I mean, what are they going to do about it? It would be weird, though, seeing a nuke go off, like, as you look back on Earth. Depends, depends on how far back you are. I mean, yeah. Maybe you're flying in Orion, and you know, just you thought maybe it was just a little extra boost they gave you. <laughs> my paint's starting to go on my ship. Yeah, mine has decided that it, it the paint job has decided to part company with the vessel <laughs> I want it to be one with the void <laughs> yep we are down to bondo and primer so you know <laughs> a car after a Michigan winter if time is money does that mean an ATM is a time machine Yes, automatic time machine. It says so right in the name. <laughs> Budman, your ship or your car? <laughs> Wait, you have primer left? <laughs> well, okay, I guess I haven't been working as hard as I could be. Thirteen more jumps, and then we are... Well, if I know. 
Oh, then we got a ways to go. I might uh, after we're done with this, um, head over to Mayor Desperationist. This that that thing over the west of Beagle Point. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I know the one you you mean. I think. The sea of the sea of desperation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got twelve more jumps to go, and then it's gonna be close enough to actual doing real world stuff. Time. I think I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to not make it to the uh, to the the That's inner nice. side of the next arm. Yeah. I think I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Stupid reality. Then again, I mean, we've done... I've done, we've what, done. 20... Well, there was 40,000 light years. We've gone 21,000 now. Roughly. Off to be civic. Good luck on the rest of the trip. Thanks, bud, man. I'm 98 jumps away from where I set the target to. Yeah, I'm not I'm not even there yet. Think about starting an errantry PvP tournament in October. Ooh. You got my attention. Oh organizer or, organized one? Wow. I'm starting to go space loopy. <laughs> so what happens in this end of space? You haven't been out on this end of space, have you? Yeah, this is where I'm well, not. Oh, let me let me check. Cause um, where I was doing the loop, I think I'm like in between that bit. Oh no, I'm slightly further out than I than my furthest point. Well, in that case, you haven't been out in this area of space. So how are you talking <laughs> about what's going on in this area of space, huh? I ask you that. You, you got me. You yeah. got me that. <laughs> uh, okay, either I have had way too much to drink or not nearly enough. <laughs> if you're wondering if you've had too much to drink, drink more. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. The answer is no. Moon and I would jump into a system at the same time. It sounded so weird. Do I remember that? Prob oh, yeah, I remember that. System map. You want planets? We got planets. You want useful planets? Uh, we got planets. We got slightly different shades of white. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I jumped into the system and like turned to get around the star, and then like the orbit lines started to appear up as like, like discovery when you come in. It was like mm -hmm. one by one by one by one by one. Oh like, neat! Just turning out in front of me. Neat! Your Xbox is chugging. <laughs> Surprised my Xbox hasn't caught fire. <laughs> my old one did. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> my um, Xbox 360, uh, it got so dusty, like in the fans, and I turned it on once after like leaving it for about three months because I wanted to play that 360 game, and it ignited. 
So that was interesting. Wow. <laughs> My mouth is screaming up the stairs with like a bracket of one just dumped it on the Xbox. <laughs> oh, that's good to do with an electrical fire <laughs> yeah, right there. I was like, no, no. <laughs> uh... Uh, panic does some, uh, some amazing things to people. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My high school chem teacher, the replacement, well, my senior year chemistry teacher, who had replaced my freshman, sophomore, junior year chemistry teacher, <clears throat> who walks, who asks for some help cataloging the chemical closet, because the previous chemistry teacher had only done an audit every other presidential administration, and he skipped the previous one. He walks into the closet, smartly turns around, closes the door, and says, There's shit in there. I would get arrested even if I tried to dispose of it properly. <laughs> oh boy. Yes. Um, and I can only tell him about the time that, the pre that his predecessor had gone into the closet. You hear him whistling and singing to himself, and then you hear an oops, damn it, crash. And then he steps out of the closet, closes the door. You see purple fumes billowing out from under the door. And he says, let's have class outside today. And as he leads us out of the classroom, he pulls the fire alarm. That's a cool teacher. I want that teacher. <laughs> oh, that man was older than dirt and meaner than hell. He was, he was also a bus driver for the school. He was a chemistry teacher and a bus driver when my dad was in elementary school. Wow, then. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess he had tenure. It's it's a high school in the middle of North Iowa. I don't know if it's tenure or just nobody else wanted the job. <clears throat> but yeah, he um, older than dirt, meaner than hell, and he just didn't yeah, he didn't give any kind of a care. Chemistry bus teacher, like a chemistry teacher and bus driver. That's a very odd mix. It sounds like a very dangerous mix. Well, you should have seen some of the... Yeah, he, he mixed his own leaded gasoline to put in the bus. Which was strange because it was huh. diesel. He's, he said he had an additive that would work. I think he watched... Well, actually, after having watched Down Periscope, I know exactly what additive he was pouring into the tank. <laughs> Basically just took a fifth of Jack and dumped it in. <laughs> I mean, I had a teacher that my dad had as well. Very religious. You get like um, if you say "God damn it" outside of a classroom, you get like a an half hour detention. <laughs> and Terlock, yeah, DBF, Sierra Bravo. Those are the best teachers. They knew how to teach. Well, it's, I don't know how much. They they certainly taught me how to not do certain things. Because we've learned better since then. I mean, his periodic table only went up to, like, element 100. The flag had 47 stars on it. That would put it all... Before World War II. <laughs> yes. Yes, it would. What's the 47 say to be added? Hmm. Uh... Because it was Alaska and Hawaii, the last two. Yeah. 47th state was New Mexico. Ah. Of course, also channeling Grandpa Simpson, he would be deep in the cold, cold ground before he recognized Missouri. 
<laughs> Ooh, spinning. Oh, it's very spinning. Yeah, Hawaii, Alaska, and New Mexico. Oh, was New Mexico added. Uh, New Mexico yes. was adding, added. Uh, Do 1912. Oh. <laughs> There's actually teaching such storage in Britain right now. It's like a national crisis. Mm. Not enough teachers, because they quit after like five years. Same with uh, NHS workers, like general practitioners. Alright, and we have arrived at Bahia. Free ZZ P D5 5 really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? <clears throat> I'm at True R U B G L C 21 27. <laughs> Again, just absolutely gripping system map. <laughs> and it's been discovered. Huh. All the other planets are like, screw this. <laughs> I wonder if this one's been discovered. Oh, yes, it has. Huh. Ha. Ah, so I'm going to drop down here. This looks like a good place to park for the rest of the day. Very pretty. Turn that off. Get that fixed up. I'm gonna have to prepare my FSD as well. Yeah. And there we go. No damage to the ship. FSD is back on the line. The rusters are good. And tomorrow, uh, I'm gonna be starting an hour early. I'm gonna be starting at 11 Pacific or six, no, 1800 UTC. Seven? Uh, seven. No, no, I started today at 7. And I started today at 1900. Oh. Yeah. So it's, it's 20 to 12 and uh, uh, night here. It's Wait, it's 20 to 12? Right? Yeah. Really? Because I'm seeing 20 to 11 on the uh, game clock. Not 20 to 12. Game clock is showing me twenty two eleven. Oh, oh, game clock. That's that's always based on GMT. That's not BST. That doesn't change. Yeah, I, I said I said UTC. I thought. Oh, UTC. Oh, right. Yeah. I thought you. Were, I thought you said BST. So I was, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're, uh, moon base one. That one was ejected. Depending, if it was space nineteen ninety nine, it was ejected. Uh, if it was Cybertron, it was eaten. Either way the most recent state to no longer be a state. Right, and on that note, I will be back tomorrow at 1800 UTC, or GMT. Yeah. One of those two. But 1800, <laughs> which is 11 a.m. Pacific. And uh, yeah, we will continue on our trip. I'm not going to be able to make the full trip tomorrow, but we put a pretty big dent into the trip this time around. And yeah, so the continuing adventures of me and Ghost Tracker on our way to Beagle Point. The space cow and the navigation pixie. Yeah, or the, the lizard <laughs> queen, I forget which one. Either well, the way, lizard though. Queen, yes. Yeah, the, spa the space cow and the, uh, the lizard queen. They fight crime. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, thank you all for coming out. Always a pleasure. Always fun hanging out. Always fun being a smartass. 
And uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go bother Levangi. Let's go bother Levangi and see what's up. So, yeah, fly safe, everybody. If you can't fly safe, fly dangerous. If you can't fly safe or fly dangerous, well, there's always Beagle Point if you do it really, really carefully. Take care, everybody, and see y'all again tomorrow, I think.